six college football picks against the spread and your boys killing it per the usual but let's get right into it usc minus eight at minnesota now this usc defense man them boys out there they feeling they self four games into 2024 and they've cut their points per game allowed in half they're allowing 130 yards less per game than last season and this will be lincoln riley's second crack at the big 10 conference foe on the road and while both usc and the golden gophers have been dominated by the michigan wolverines this year both teams also never lost their composure and managed to make a game of it in the second half now, you might want to look at the Michigan result for both teams and say this is an even matchup. But USC is dynamic on offense in a way that Michigan is not. And this is the first time all season long that Minnesota quarterback Max Brosmer won't be the best quarterback on the field. Now, this game is really going to come down to whether USC's Miller Moss can continue to spread the ball all over the field like he has the first couple of weeks. And if Jacoby Lane, oh man, this dude is making big time plays. If he continues to establish himself as the star wide receiver at that position, this offense is going to look real good. Now, Minnesota, on the other hand, they were down 24 to three at one point to Michigan, and they were able to rally all the way back. And if it weren't for a bad referee call on an onside kick, they would have had an opportunity to win that football game. But USC, they ain't going to do what Michigan did and kind of their offense is going to get stalled or take their foot off the gas. So give me the Trojans and they going to cover this spread, baby. Next game up, Iowa at Ohio State minus 20 and a half. Now it's time to see what this Ohio State team can really do. Now granted, Iowa's offense stinks, but we have some of the best running backs in the country, the best wideouts, and the defense as a whole is full of monsters, but this schedule has been light, and we've seen a bunch of teams this year already, oh, oh Miss, um, that have looked like Tarzan, played like Jane, once they get in front of any sort of competition. Now the Buckeyes are like a boxer that enters a fight 30 and 0, 28 knockouts, but then you look at their opponent only to find out that 20 of the dudes that he knocked out are working on construction sites or waiting tables right now. But now on the other hand, Iowa's offense, which I mentioned, ain't that good and they haven't looked great. But they did choke the life out of Minnesota. And if it wasn't for Kirk Ferentz playing run and punt football on the team's final possession against Iowa State, they probably would have won that game too. Iowa is a tough and a physical football team. And they're going to give anybody a problem in the country in that element of the game. And all we've heard about this Ohio State team is that they're good enough to be above any problems. Well, let's see. We're going to see in this game. And I'm going to ride with the Buckeyes on a three-score spread because they are built to play all four quarters. And the closer and closer that they get to playing tough football games, we are going to learn more and more about this team. And in fact, Ohio State has outscored their opponents 101-3 to in the second half this year. So I will not be surprised if this game is close at the half, but that 20 and a half could still happen in the second half just alone in this game. Give me the Buckeyes. Next game up, Virginia Tech at Stanford plus eight. Troy Taylor, Stanford's head coach, is a good coach. And Stanford is just not a very good football team. And they do deserve a ton of credit for overcoming multiple turnovers by Ashton Daniels and 340 passing yards by Kyle McCord to beat Syracuse on the road. But they got outclassed in Death Valley last week against Clemson and just, just, they just got the floor mop with them. This week, Stanford gets Virginia Tech, who's coming off that controversial loss to Miami and the last play of the game, the Hail Mary sort of thing. And the Hokies have had to make that cross country trip out to the Bay. So we are gonna see how they handle that. The quarterback over at Stanford, Ashton Daniels, the kid is beat up. He runs so much, he's actually a battering ram. But even if Justin Lamson has to start this game and Stanford has to shift to a more run heavy offensive scheme, I like Stanford to hang tough with Virginia Tech because this Virginia Tech offense doesn't look like they're gonna score a lot of points. I still expect Stanford to hang tough with Virginia Tech. Why? 
Well, first, the Hokies have been extremely disappointing on defense, and they do not protect the football. Their quarterback, Kyron Drones, who I gave some Heisman hype to after he tore up the ACC toward the end of last year, he hasn't made the type of progress on the field that I would have liked to have seen as a passer. And if Stanford does decide to go round and pound and exploit the fact that the Hokies are giving up four and a half yards per rush on the season, that's going to neutralize Virginia Tech's biggest threat on defense, which is Antoine Powell, who has seven sacks on the year so far. So with that being said, it's obvious. Give me Stanford plus eight. Next game up. Oh, I'm excited about this game. Miami at Cal plus 10 and a half. 19 interceptions between these two defenses so far this year. So who's ready to get things weird? Game day is going to be there. It is a cross-country trip. 10.30 body clock kickoff. And Cal is one touchdown away from being undefeated. And this defense is no stranger to facing Miami's quarterback, Cam Ward. Both times Ward faced Cal when he was at Wazoo. He threw for a ton of yards, but he also had several costly turnovers. And if Cal is going to be the first team this season to beat Miami, they're going to have to do it on defense. And 6'6", 280-pound Xavier Carlton might just be the guy to get Ward off schedule and force some bad decisions. But you're not going to shut Miami out. Shannon Dawson, their offensive coordinator, is fire as a play caller. So how long can Cal hang with Miami offensively? That's the question. Well, even if you can slow down Jaden Ott, who you may not have heard of, who's Cal's running back, the kid is super good. That's been everybody's strategy this year. And Cal has even seen Javian Thomas step up in the run game to provide that change of pace in the backfield. And Cal's quarterback, Fernando Mendoza, a Miami native, so this is a big game for him, has made some big throws to Nazia Hunter. So that's a connection that we're gonna wanna watch. And as long as Mendoza protects the ball and Cal capitalizes on a turnover or two, this game will be close. Final game up, Clemson minus 14 and a half at Florida State. This game's getting weird to me, man. I don't know why. But Clemson just ate one more first-time starter alive in their game against NC State when NC State started a freshman. Whoo, it was bad. Then they turned around and knocked out Ashton Daniels out of the Stanford game last week. And now they get the benefit of another first-time starting quarterback. Ooh. <laughs> because for Florida State, with DJ Uyangalele out, Mike Norvell is going to turn to Brock Glenn, who is 19 for 55 passing at Florida State in spot duty and only completed 74 passes as a senior in high school back in 2022. Meanwhile, Clemson's K. Klubnik is coming off of a three-game run where it looks like he's finally starting to look like the five-star recruit that had Tiger fans happy to see DJU leave the program. Now, Klubnik has had 16 passing and rushing touchdowns alone in the last three weeks, and that's twice as many as Florida State has had as a team on offense this year because it's frustrating that we're not going to get the revenge storyline that we were promised when DJU you made the move to Tallahassee, but why not capitalize on that and make some easy money betting on Clemson? Because, yeah, ain't no way Florida State wins this football game. And the game I will tell you to stay away from, the weirdest spread of the day is Michigan plus two and a half at Washington. Now, this line probably is going to look like easy money to Michigan betters, just like me last week when they were nine-point favorites against Minnesota. That should have been an easy cover. But Washington is only a couple of bonehead coaching decisions away from being undefeated. And Michigan is two scores away from being two and three. Their win over Fresno State looks even suspect now after UNLV dropped almost 60 on the Bulldogs last week. This is not a revenge game. There's only one offensive starter between the two teams that's returning from last year's national championship. Just hold on to your money in this one, people.